In this video, we will be studying about diode which is a semiconductor device and also active in nature. This is a PN junction device. You would have seen in textbooks or probably heard that a P type material and an N type material are joined together to form a PN junction. This is not true. Actually, a semiconductor bar is taken and one half is doped with trivalent impurity and another half is doped with pentavalent impurity. Hence, a junction is formed here. The junction shown here by a straight line is only for illustrative purposes and for ease of understanding. In real life, it's an uneven edge. This lead is called as an anode and this is called as a cathode. This is the symbol of a PN junction diode. Next, we will study about biasing of diodes. Biasing means to connect a battery or power source to the diode. As a first case, let's study about what happens in an unbiased diode. The p-type material has got majority carriers as holes and minority carriers as electrons. It is shown by white and yellow dots. For n-type, we have electrons which are the majority carriers and holes which are the minority carriers. There is a difference in concentration in n-type and p-type regions. This is called concentration gradient and it will try to stabilize this change in concentration. So imagine a perfume bottle is opened at one corner of a room. Initially, the concentration is high only at one end and gradually it spreads to other parts of the room to attain equal concentration and stability. The holes cross this barrier to move to N type. An atom is actually neutral and when it loses a hole, it becomes negatively charged. Similarly, an atom losing an electron will become positively charged. The atoms are immobile, that is they are fixed and they form an array near the junction. This is called as the depletion region. It prevents further movement of charge carriers across the junction. If electrons or holes need to cross the barrier, some extra energy like a battery needs to be connected. If a diode is forward biased, that is, the positive terminal of the battery is connected to p-type and the negative to the n-type. Then we know that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Due to this, positive and the holes would repel, giving the holes sufficient energy to cross the barrier. Once the holes reach the end side, it is attracted by the negative terminal of the battery. The circuit is completed like this when the charge carriers moves and it contributes towards current flow. When the diode is reverse biased, the negative terminal is connected to p-type and the positive terminal is connected to n-type. The holes which are majority carriers here are attracted to the negative terminal and the electrons are attracted towards the positive terminal. Since it does not complete the circuit, there will be no current flow. The battery pulls out more charge carriers towards it from each side and the depletion region becomes widened. The current flow in reverse bias is only due to minority carriers. The electrons are repelled by the negative terminal. They cross the barrier and are attracted by the positive terminal. This current is called reverse current. We should know how a diode behaves and for this we need to draw a graph or characteristic. In order to plot the characteristic of a diode, we have an experimental setup as shown here. The diode is forward biased using the supply and a voltmeter and milliammeter is used for displaying the values of voltage and current. Voltmeter is connected in parallel and ammeter is connected in series. Since voltage is same in parallel branches and current is same when connected in series. 
We now slowly increase the voltage supply starting from zero and note the values of both voltage as well as current. At one point, the current begins to flow and this is called cut-in voltage since it cuts into the positive quadrant. At a particular voltage, the current suddenly increases and this is called as knee voltage since it creates a bend. From the previous graph, we have to calculate two types of resistances. One is called static resistance or DC resistance, which is obtained by noting the value of current at a particular value of voltage. The resistance is given by V by I according to Ohm's law. Next we have dynamic resistance or AC resistance, which means that there is a change. It is represented by RAC and it is change in voltage across the diode to change in current. So choose two points of voltage and their corresponding current values and we can get the change in voltage that is delta V divided by the change in current that is delta I in order to calculate RAC. Next, to get the reverse characteristic of a diode, the setup is similar to that of a forward bias diode. The only difference here is that the diode is placed in a reverse manner. Also, we have a microammeter instead of a milliammeter because the reverse current is very small. A digital multimeter could also be used. The voltage is increased in steps and the value of current and voltages are noted and it can be also plotted on a graph. The voltage at which reverse current begins to flow suddenly is called as breakdown voltage VBR. We have two types of breakdown mechanisms and in one particular diode we have only one type of breakdown. One is called as avalanche breakdown in which one electron would collide a covalent bond thereby releasing two free electrons and this continues leading to a multiplication effect. We also have a Zener breakdown where a high electric field will pull out electrons from the covalent bond. These are the differences between Zener and avalanche breakdown. Zener occurs in heavily doped diodes and it is due to ionization by electric field and it occurs less than 5 voltage and once it goes into a Zener breakdown, the voltage across the diode would be a constant. It is the opposite cases in case of an avalanche breakdown.